Child support is 100% unconstitutional. It's illegal. It is voluntary. But you really got to know the law. So what happened with me with child support is simply that I could not believe it was happening. Whatever compelled me to pick it up, because they called three, four times, it was definitely an African-American woman, police, and she was like, yeah, why don't you try putting something a little extra on that child support? It's Christmas time. She said, I moved across the country to put this motherfucker in jail. Damn, if he got 50000 on him, I don't want it. I want him in jail. So the judge said, what you want to do? I said, fuck it then. Lock me up. Fuck out of here. Wow. And you worst kept your money. Mistake, worst mistake I ever made in my motherfucking life. Ladies and ugly men, welcome to Paris Uncut. I'm your host, handsome Johnny Emilio Contreras, here with these two beautiful young ladies. Ooh, young today. I threw young. I threw young. Who are you? Yeah, you guys got names? Yeah, I have a name. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine. Jazz. Jazzy's Joy. This is my friend. <laughs> I'm just her friend right now. It's Jax. And that's all you're ever going to get. Yo, I like your hat. Yo, thanks. What does it stand for? So remember that one time at band camp, I was like, <laughs> last week. first of all, shut the fuck up and mind your business. Yeah. Ooh. So as always, shut the fuck Ooh. up and mind your business. She's she the mean mom. I'm not the mean mom. I'm just a mean <laughs> person, period. Actually, yeah, I think it's the reverse. You're actually a nice mom. I'm a great mom. Yeah. yeah I know, you, you know, I shouldn't have to say mean. that. Right? I know. But you said it. I angry kind of felt mom. Icky, but. I'm, a, I'm not an angry mom. <laughs> not at your kids. Everybody no, I'm not. Else. I'm just Everybody else in the world could get it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about me. We have a special guest. Yes. Today we have somebody that, to me personally, is, is one of the greatest people I ever met, man. This is one of my mentors. Yo, listen, it's one of my mentors, one of my OGs, more like a brother. When I'm going through shit, I hit you up. I hit you up, you know, with crazy shit a couple of weeks ago. Here we are. Just life getting nuts. This is a man right here, a Puerto Rican entrepreneur, over 25 years in the restaurant and food franchising industry. Hello. And... Over 25 years in the real estate industry, hence how I met him. Indeed. Held my hand pretty much, paused. When first flick, fix and flip was with, yo, it's the truth. You still do pause. pause. You still do pause out here. It, it's pause mandatory. That. It's mandatory. It's bacon oh, and cheese. Oh, Lord. It's, it's mandatory. Cheese. Yo, this man been doing real estate in every single coast. So he knows pause is still mandatory all across the United Valid. States, bro. Valid. So you, right? pause, you pause people over in Cali? You pause people. No doubt. They be like, yeah, that's that New York shit, homie. <laughs> <laughs> New York shit, homie. I fuck with you, man. I fuck with you. Nah, man. Yeah. Then there's a lot more, man. Ghost. He's a father of five. Wow. wow. All right, right. You beat me. Yeah, yeah she's the mother of four. Got time. Oh, no, 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 man. That's what I said, too. I said four cool. was it. Espérate. I got to go make an appointment. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Got time. Shut up. And what else we got? We got, oh, the biggest... Credit repair agency or credit restoration agency right, in the right, Midwest. Right. Meta Credit for better credit. So y'all, y'all watching, you get a free analysis of your credit. Oh. I put him on on the spot I can right now. I tell you now. right now, your credit is trash. <laughs> Damn. There you go. Especially if you get with the bread. We are against <laughs> analysis. I tell you right now, off top. Nah, man. But most recently, <laughs> which you just spoke on right now, he's uh, become the number one food blogger in all of Chicago land. That's a fact. Nice. Food with Foxito, mm -hmm. which took off and blew through the roof. Fox Pena, man, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before I start talking shit, <laughs> and I'm going to talk a lot of shit, I want to say, I want to commend y'all on this podcast. The success of it, the idea of it, this discussion is very important in your age demographic. But more importantly, it's important in our households, right? Yeah. Because in our households, what do we get? We get critique from our parents about how we parenting. And then when we bark back, they be like, I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I see ya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you be like, damn, all I said was, <laughs> all I said was, I'm trying to. So, you know what I mean? This is a very, very important. And again, I'm going to just keep it real because I definitely keep it real. I'm the one who pressed Johnny. To be on here, I'm like, oh, oh y'all told my parents. And, oh, I said, yuck, I got to come through. So, um, yeah, this is important, and I congratulate y'all. Real shit. Thank you. Thank you. Balls on Appreciate your that. Yeah. Balls on your there we go, goddamn. I'm Thank kind of here. stunned. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so Chicago. Let me just tell y'all, for those that don't know me, uh, I'm born and raised in New York, Washington Heights, baby. Huh? 
back when Puerto Ricans were in style. Dominicans holding it oh. down now. We finished out. Damn. Damn. Yeah, we finished. <laughs> we finished in New York. We got nothing. We don't even got bodegas no more. Like, y'all still got the Bronx? Not really, bro. No, Most of us don't. became firemen and policemen. you right. We moved out. <laughs> yeah, the this Bronx is over. But I just want to say that uh, Chicago, man, Chicago has really embraced me. Chicago did more for me in 18 months than New York did in 30 years. Wow. wow. So I definitely rep the shy and everybody back at the crib. You know what I mean? Shout out to y'all, man. We doing we doing some fly shit out there in Chicago. Damn, well, you that's... just came to a New York podcast and shot on us. Shout out <laughs> Chicago, son. That's how it go. Listen, even Jesus didn't get no love in his hometown. Damn. Jesus had to slide. Oh, yeah. It's, the shy. it's the shy for me. <laughs> we starting off strong. <laughs> Yo, so let's get to it, man. Let's go. Five kids. Give us, give me an age you. range. Yeah, yeah from, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be serious for a minute. So the yeah, age please. range is 25 to 10. Oh, wow. So my oldest okay. is 25, 23, 20, 16, and then the little homie is 10 years old. And the first four are what? Girls. That's oh. what I'm See, the thing is, I was chasing Karma. the boy, right? <laughs> Uh, you know what? That's what my homies say. Shoot them. Can I curse them? Yeah, of course. Yeah, fuck my homies. And listen, that's some bullshit. But it was common. We know that. I just don't want to admit okay. it. Okay. All right? So it's true. Now, the irony is that I was raised by four women. Oh, shit. Feel me? Wow. Right. My mother, my grandmother, my grandmother's sister, my great aunt, and my sister who got 10 years on me. Wow. But that's what my household was like. And then I turned around and have four girls. So it's crazy. Wow. But, you know, a lot of people have... All right. So I, I raised my kids on the West Coast where Mormonism is more prevalent, right? So I would go out and people would be like, God damn, bro, you Mormon? And I'm like, that's so fucking offensive, bro. Like, choke on something. Like, you on bullshit. Other, other motherfuckers, like, I'd be out at a restaurant, whatever, with my kids, because I always took my kids to the flyest shit from early because I want to know, ain't no motherfucker going to come around and take you to a uh, motherfucking uh, Chick-fil-A and impress you. Mm -hmm. We girls, balling bro. from birth. So they always got compliments on how well-behaved they were, whatever. Um, but then every now and then, motherfucker will come by and be like, what's wrong with you, man? You don't know how to make boys? How <laughs> <laughs> defensive. I'll be wanting to fight. Ooh, damn. Wanting to fight. But anyway, so I was chasing the boy, right? So what I did is I switched out the wombs. See, the womb there was we go. fucking me up. Wow. I switched, oh I switched the womb out. Yo, the first womb gave you four girls. Four girls. So now they say well. it's the man. I did research. I, I did research. There is some acid concoctions in there that could sway the sex. Now, is it 100% guaranteed? Hell no. But we got to run with that. We got to place blame on others. because then Yeah, yo, pH balance. Right? So what did you do? Switch the womb out. <laughs> got a different one later. I have four boys, so. What? It's yeah. the womb, bro. I'm the problem. Maybe you need a new man. Bro, I'm Damn. trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to tell you. No. I got, listen. Wow, that's crazy. No, sorry. No, no I'm, no, I'm no, just no. joking. Yeah. She got from 19 to 3. 19, okay. So same four. type of vibe. Turn four. Four, my four. bad. Four. Four boys, that's crazy. Four. So anyway, yeah, I was married 26 years. I ain't got a whole lot of baby mama shit. 26 years with the same uh, woman from 14 years old up. Oh, wow. Got divorced. Um... I knew my window was closing because I'm getting divorced now. I'm pushing 40-ish, right? right? And I know the boy is coming because I was told by, like, the spiritual world, right? I know he's coming. And they told me, you're going to get the boy, but it's not going to be with her. And sometimes mm -hmm. I used to say it in front of my wife, which was wild uncomfortable, wow. right? And they would tell me in Spanish, but she was Jamaican, but she spoke Spanish. So that didn't help, <laughs> right? Didn't fucking help. Damn, that's so crazy. I say to myself, okay, I'm going to roll the dice. We're going to do a one-shot deal, dead ass. One-shot deal. We're going to go to Puerto Rico. If we conceive the baby, we good. If we don't, we clap hands and we we good. Boom. One shot. So now I'm waiting. I'm like, man, this sonogram. This sonogram. Man, I'm looking up at that screen. And when they took the thing, they cracked the little legs off, seen the nuts drop. She yeah. I was like, they were like, oh, you look like my husband on Sunday with football. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting 40 years for this. Anyway, well, that's, well, that's how I got risky five. as fuck. I was fuck. chasing the boy. Aw. Yeah. Is he a junior? Nah, nah. His name is Grayson. Shout out Grayson. Oh, nice. Very handsome basketball star. I rock with him. Yo, also, we seen him. Also Sturdy King. It I was, was saying, oh, was the, yo, he's <laughs> Super doing sturdy. the dancing. I see him do yeah. the dancing. I see him in your Doritos commercial. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Which right. to yeah. me was like, oh shit, he's finally bringing the kids into the world. What led to that? Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. being like, yo, let me bring them into this world. Nah, 
what what led to it is 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 is, is just me being transparent. Like there is an audience for people who want to know about the snacks. We're all in Walmart. We all have kids. But at my age and size, I really can't be eating them snacks on camera. <laughs> it does not fucking work with the oil. It don't translate. They be like, you're going to get your feet cut off. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. My feet, fuck you. The comments will never let them. Bro, they ugly out there. Y'all, like, y'all really want my feet cut off over Doritos? Who feet raised you, food. motherfucker? Ooh, yeah. like, like, think about your parents. Like, you a grown man. They raised you to get on someone's page and wish their feet are cut off. You're not a success. Yo, bro. <laughs> no one's proud of you. Fam. I think about that shit every time I see these wild comments. I'm like, yo, man. you guys are really brave behind these phone screens. Bro, bro. it's crazy. It's hurt. Especially, me. they go after us too. They never come after her. <gasps> but us, we oh, get like the that? worst. Call me, bro. Why don't you go eat a donut? Is First that of all, right? I was like, I love donuts. The other yeah. They be day, acting like I got a big forehead. Both <laughs> of, of you shut up. The other day, I was called a misogynist. <laughs> oh, finally. Was, oh. I went, listen, I went From her freaking with this uh, account. Get out of here. She got I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I was like, nah, you, you're not about to win this argument. Wait, that was on TikTok? Yeah, on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Somebody hit him up. What was it? They said, uh, you simp, go hug your mother. Some kind yeah, of somebody thing. said go hug no your mother. That, no to that. No to that. I don't get involved in the comments. They were like, oh, you Crazy. still suck on your mother's tit as, at 40 years old. <laughs> go, go hug your mother. And then me and him was going at it about it. I told him he hates himself. They do. They do hate I told himself. him he hates himself and, and that's what... How do you deal with that? Uh, again, back to monetization, I just have to ignore it. I used to go heavy mm -hmm. uh, and I would get banned for months. He'll tell you. Yeah. You know, like, they will black me out for six months. Wow. And wow. your paper stops. I'm talking about stops. Ooh. Like, when you're used to getting, let's just be realistic, like 20, 30,000 spins per video, right? And that shit goes to 700 for six months and then they take away your ability to go live. So I've grown thick skin um because you got no choice. You got to yeah, you got to yeah. lay it out. But 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 to your to your question, how do I deal with it? In the beginning, you know, and again, handsome no, I just tell people I'll give you my address. I'll knock your motherfucking <laughs> teeth out your mouth cuz you straight pussy, B. Like how you on another man's page leaving comments and you you local. Like you could pull up and get it. But that's ridiculous. <laughs> See, they draw you into their ugly little yeah, world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're commenting, if you're a grown man, if you're a young kid and you a troller, whatever, right? Troll on. But when you're in your 30s, 40s, right, and you're on another man's page, Bro. you got no business. Like, you literally in your mother's basement telling her, don't touch my orange juice, mom. <laughs> Put your name Mommy, don't talk. I'm sending voice notes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, that's really what you're doing in your life. Oh because it's an impossibility. Yeah. It's literally an impossibility that you have time to comment something so negative and vile on another grown man's page. It's crazy, you know? And I think it's laced in homosexuality. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of, but not open, healthy homosexual relationships. It's men who are dealing with issues. issues. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think it's based in that. Behind closed doors. Um, yes. So, and this is why I said, so his fight with me was, why do we need... Why do you feel like we need men. men, right? Why do we why do we need men to raise um men? Because I'm a successful man and I didn't need a man. So I in turn at the end said, so you saying that this world doesn't need you? You hate yourself. Mm. Factory. Mm. You hate That's yourself. Facts. See, this is the That's jefecita. Facts. This is the one that makes me proud, man. Yeah, but when she gets in that mode. Not oh. yo, you always make me proud. Wow. No, he was, and I and I didn't want to go there with him. Oh, he was of the community. Yes. Yeah. So and that just opens up a deeper conversation. And at oh. the end, of how you the found day, that? Right. You go on his page, oh, and that was the, the, that was the, the first thing you see. At the I don't end know. of the day, and this this philosophy comes from their community initially. It's about tolerance. So if you have an opinion, and you're representing a community that initially was about tolerance, because now it's about you better. Right. It was started with tolerance, then acceptance. Now you better. It's a it's a contradiction. So I yeah. think you're right. I think he's dealing with issues because 100%. he's not he's not representing even his own personal philosophy. He's not representing in a healthy way and l willing to open up discussion because that's what these podcasts are about, right? Yeah. You you incite thought. You open discussion, and if because right now at this level, y'all can still interact with these heathens. Um, it's not gonna always be that way. Mm -hmm. Once right. the shit pop. Pop pop is like it's over. Who said what? I don't know. I'm counting money. Hang up. <laughs>
Amir. Amen. Look, <laughs> click. <laughs> Don't <laughs> call no more. <laughs> Done. Yeah, you know how it go. How you deal with your kids and, t- and the whole social media? They're growing up on this shit. So they're dealing with that. It's a very different world for them than us. And because I, I think, see how you say, yo, pull up. Yeah. I think they're more accustomed to it in a way. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, all right, I'll keep it a thousand. Social media isn't a big as deal as the video games. Word. That's where you're susceptible. You have other kids from animal households. They talk crazy. Bite my tongue. Right. And you don't know the age of the kids. No. Right? And you hear this shit going on and you're like, what? So that's where the real danger is. Keep it real. So how do I deal with kids' social media? When my girls were growing up, they were kind of on the cusp of it. Yeah, yeah. It was just coming out. They were in like, you know, 10-ish. It wasn't a big deal. I got through it easy. My son, it's the goddamn TikTok hip hop. Yeah. Because the TikTok hip hop is a bunch of 13 year olds. A lot of them are from the UK. They got the Pooh Shiesty joints. The on. drill shit. They're rapping about murder, murder, murder. It's rappers I've never heard of, but the yep. following and the spins is crazy. Yeah. 13, 20 yeah. million per video. And, you know, so a lot of my parenting stems from him watching the shit he's not supposed to watch. So we'll discuss it, right? Because I'll be hypocritical to say, okay, you can't listen to hip hop. I could, because he's not from the hood. He goes to private school. You understand what I'm saying? We 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 conquered that. We conquered that poverty phase, right? But at the same time, hip hop changed my life. So for me to just take it from, I think is hypocritical. Um, although, you know, the, I don't see the positive messages we grew up with. You know, prior to them taking hip hop from yeah. us, right. the Karis ones, the Public Enemies, mm-hmm. X Clan, Brand Nubian, all that energy, we don't have it. But <clears throat> I still find that there's expression in it. I still find that he can learn how to express himself through hip hop. So um, a lot of parenting comes from that. Like, look, you know, this is bullshit. You know, this is not real. You know this, you know that. Um, but it's the video games where, where it's challenging. Yeah. And I feel like because anybody could hide behind that. Behind that that controller, mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that that shit gets wild. With yo, with my kids, like I re- my fourteen year old, one day I'm listening to him. I think he was on the phone and playing the video game, and I hear some guy, some guy, and he sounds that's not a kid. Nope. And I was like, a second, who are you talking to? Oh, that's I don't give a shit. Get off the phone. You should not be talking to no grown ass man, and no grown ass man should be in your business. Hang up the phone. Right now. And I said it loud, like, mm, I don't give a yeah, fuck yeah. Wh- who's on the other line. Absolutely not. Because that's that doesn't only start with little girls. Right. No, My kids are, are, yeah. I got to protect them just like everybody, you know, you got to exactly. protect your, your girls. I have to t- protect my boys. Yeah. Because people are not thinking that way. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Get off the phone right now. Yeah. That was, that's crazy. I'm going to tell you something else about <clears> that, <throat> protecting boys. Right. So when we grew up, Hollywood has such a big influence on us and Hollywood is the biggest flip flopper. And when I say Hollywood basically means any media that's programming us. Right. So when we were kids, any movie you watch, any sitcom you watch, homosexuality was frowned upon and it was clowned. Right. They clowned you. Right. If you were you had a gay character, whatever. You were the butt of every joke, you know, Archie Bunker style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying right. that type of vibe. Right. right? Now these kids grow up where all the lines are blurred. So if you have someone on a video game older that's sending any kind of message to your kid, yeah. they don't know what we know or what we thought we knew because we were programmed as well. Right. You see what I'm saying? You said that in Death of God in terms of, so here's a documentary called Death of God on YouTube, everybody go check it out, where you were like, even the gangsters, the mafia, were taught how to be the mafia by watching Goodfellas. Like That's Hollywood, a fact. by watching Godfather. Yeah, Godfather. That's right. a fact. Right. Like, That's a fact. The mafia was so fucking furious after Godfather because the street guys started acting like the guy in the movie. And they're like, we're supposed to be on the low. So everything from when you open presents on Christmas, the reaction you give, you learn that from watching other people. No one's going to react to opening a gift <laughs> if you've never seen it before. You're going to open it and be like, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When, when we have tragedy, the way we react, we're reenacting what we saw. So it's the same thing with these kids. So if you're watching images where the lines of sexuality are blurred 
and then you hear something sexual from the same sex, you're not going to have the same reaction we did when we were kids. Because we were kids, we were like, oh, this shit is funny right here. You wilding. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, well, I don't really know if it was wilding or not. That's crazy you bring that up. We were just talking, Jackie and I, I posted something of this trans woman with, what's his name? Uh... Torrey, I think it's Torrey. Yeah. Whatever. And she was like, I don't feel the need, right, to let anybody know what I am on the right. first or second day. And he was like, for real? Like, you really feel this way? Because that's kind of like a violation. She's like, no, it's, it's too burdensome, right? And then one of my friends commented, she's like, you know, we have to take consideration that our kids are learning something way different than us. Mm -hmm. So if that ends up happening, whereas you said, back in the day, if I'm on a date with a dude and I didn't know it was a dude, I automatically know, whoa, this ain't it, bro. Like, it's not for me, but not because it's wrong, because it's not for me. And she's like, my son is growing up in a world where the lines are blurred. So if that happens to him, somebody does not warn him prior, his mind can say, oh, am I gay? Because I don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm not being told that it's okay to be an individual. I'm being told, yo, everything is one. Mm -hmm. So that to me is like a, a way, we were having the convo, it's like, it's... It's touchy ground because you have to be on like this walking with eggshell shit yeah. for no reason because, yo, at the end of the day, if you're something and you're not, yo, I'm not with it. It's not the old days where, yo, you're going to get beat up or some stupid shit. But they make you think, yo, if you say anything different, now all of a sudden I'm teaching my kid bigotry. It's tough. And I think that, well, the thing is the media and the media is now social media is controlled. Not enough women are stepping up, right? Wait. And what I mean by that, Clarify, remind yeah. me the, the ending of Death of God is this conversation right here. But not enough women are stepping up and, and glorifying the Toto, right? Because when people say, oh, well, it's, it's, it's trans. If you like pussy, you're not interested in a penis that has nothing to do with trans or gay or anything else. So when you hear these discussions and women ain't stepping up, like, how could you be anti-trans because you don't want to date a trans if you're a man who enjoys vaginal heterosexual sex? It's a like, practice. that's what I enjoy. I enjoy mm -hmm. pussy. But I'm anti or I'm perpetuating some type of hate crime because I don't want to be with a trans person. See, these are the real discussions, but the media is muted. Women do feel like this. Oh, they don't have the platform. I agree 100% because you know my, my biggest thing is it pisses me the fuck off. And I will say this all day, every day, that there is a trans person, they're a, a trans woman, and they're a woman of the year. There is nothing on your fucking body yeah. that calls you a fucking woman. I was born this way, right. right? So now I have to step aside to give you a pedestal. That's a... I don't give a fuck. I don't care what the fuck you think. You're a fucking man. You were born a man. And you're trying to tell me that you are more woman than me. I can naturally give birth. I don't need somebody else to, to, to have kids for me. Yeah. This happens with me. So now I can't be a woman or I can't express my womanhood because you want to be a woman. Listen, that's great for you. I respect you. That's on you. But you're not a fucking woman. You're not me. It's right. not, it's, it, it just, I, that's something I am not okay with. Yeah, but they teach you, the media teaches you to not say, you said they don't step up 100%. and glorify their shit because it's like, they're almost programming us to have to be like, damn, but I'm a hater if I say that shit. Yeah. Yo, I really am a bigot, bro. Like Political correctness yeah. became law without it being written into law, right? But to yeah. your point. You're talking about Bruce Jenner. Even if you're not, I'm saying you are. <laughs> no, I am. That's, that's I am. 15 foot ass motherfucker. <laughs> right. So again, woman of the year. The agenda gave him that award for bravery. I'm going to show you how he was a coward right now. I got no respect for him. I would never call him Caitlyn, whatever. I do respect his opinions on trans. Mm -hmm. I really do mm -hmm. respect it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awake. Right. He, he knows, right? But here's why I there's no... Um, <clears throat> there's no bravery for me. He said he had these feelings when he was in his 30s. So you was a fucking coward from 30 to 60, whatever you are, and you done brought all these kids into it, all these grandkids that had to watch you transition, 
and you embarrassed the whole family because you did it on national TV and you did it for money. Now, they all enjoy the money and that's the therapy for them. Damn. That, hey, you know, we're in the hundreds of million now. This is dynastic wealth now. Mm -hmm. This ain't, you know, we got some bread. This is dynastic wealth. So I don't respect it. I think it's ridiculous. But back to trend. This is, and this is going to be probably unpopular opinion. I don't think it's wrong to go out on a couple of dates and, 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 not exposed that you're trans. I don't think that's wrong. Because it may be unsafe, but that's why I'm saying dates. I'll tell you why. You know I think you're going back yeah, yeah. to the crib. That's different. You're mm -hmm. putting yourself That's what I was saying right wrong. now. It, it gets if wrong. You're just when... gonna go on dates, yeah. vibe it out, see what's up, and let because you're gonna get a whole bunch of no's that could have been maybes when you say it in the beginning. Be like, hey, you know, you look good. I'd like to take you out. Well, you know I'm trans. That alone is putting, that's like, yes or no. So motherfucker natural relax. Oh, no, nah, I don't go that route. Mm -hmm. When maybe they do. And they don't you know. know. What right. And they, they don't know it. or whatever, or they're scared to say it. No, but that's why like, I agree ahead. with you. Because to me, that's cool. You don't have to say it. If we are about to get intimate, and to me, intimacy is a kiss. Yeah. Then you no, definitely. got to let me know. You got to expose it at that point. You got to let me know. Not because I'm I'm going to be knocking you the fuck out. going nah, it's yeah, like, yeah, no. Oh, shit. Yo, I got the wrong vibe. My bad. Because. We're enlightened. I'm not an asshole. I'm gonna be like, what? Yo, I'm gonna kill you. It's like, yeah. damn, bro. I really I thought you were a girl, girl. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> these are the times we have. I'm gonna keep it a stack because I'm an old head. There ain't a motherfucking dude that can convince me he's a woman. If I sit down with you <laughs> three, three, three yeah. seconds, I already know. And I ain't gotta look for no Adam's apple. I ain't gotta look for none of that. I just know it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't and tell? I no, he's I saying he can't can tell. tell. You better stop, right? <laughs> you better stop right now. You got me. I'm like, wait, what? I knew you since you were young. Where she was going with nah, nah, I knew where she was going No with wonder that. you look like Alberto. Yeah. Hey, I used to be James. Yeah. Yo, I yeah, so good. Thank you so name. much. Yeah, she played that all the way out, right? Yo, she the sure name ready that all was good, right? <laughs> all right, let's switch gears. Yeah. Woo. Because yeah. I want to get on something different. Fox is very in touch with the legal system, with immigration, with all that stuff. Okay. I know your mom did a lot of work with immigrants and, yeah. and whatnot. So I know it sounds like I'm about to get into immigration. No, no. I'm not going to get into no. immigration. <laughs> Talk to me about the court system. Talk to me about child support. Oh, okay. We're How about all these things are established. What? Because people need to also not only know that it's there. As a woman, you need to know your rights, but men don't know their rights as well right. when it comes to this system. All right. So I'm going to get into it. Give me some fire. But I got to go back to the trans shit. One second. <laughs> no, because I, I, have to, I have to address something. Well, trans, I got to pay child support as well. Yeah, or do they? But, but I want to address something. Do I they? I want to address blurring the lines. Yeah. Yes. And, and this was the ultimate method, message in the death of God, was taking away the right and privilege to reproduce. That was the ultimate punch. Yes. Yeah. So the death of God is that when you blur sexuality. Now, mind you, let me shout out my daughter. My daughter is a big executive at um, J. Crew, so she'd been telling me about um, gender fluid clothing and glasses that ha have filters in them that connect to your social media, and all this shit is already a fact. Facebook developed them; it's already a fact. It just ain't out yet. But <clears throat> gender fluid. So the ultimate goal is that when we walk down the street, we don't know who's man or woman. Oh, I see your avatar. People, right, we're just people. And then when you go to be intimate, you find out what kind of package you're working Ooh. with. And no one really cares because you're going to make children in a laboratory. And your social credit score is going to determine your eligibility to create a child and you make designer babies. So this is a the episode death. of Black Mirror. That's exactly right. This yep. is China. Like, this is exactly right. Yep. That's, social exactly what, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. But the shit is real. You know what I'm saying? And it's all written. It's not no secret. It's not no conspiracy. And generally speaking, when I talk, I only speak facts that are semi-easily researchable. Because when you pull the shit out of nowhere, people are like, yeah, and you lose interest, and you're, and you're wasting your breath, really, because people are happy where they're at. But So let's close that out, that that is the ultimate goal of the gender fluid movement, where there is no gender because birth will be in a laboratory. All right. nah, but, yo, you just said that, and I saw... <laughs> I don't know if this shit is real or not, but I saw it online that this guy changed his identity, his gender identity, to be a woman to avoid child support. Yeah. What? I've seen that. Yeah. 
I don't know if it's real or not, but I, I saw I, it. No, I was like, there is some reality to it. I wish I huh? could recall it. Whether that worked or not, this has worked in the prison system. In some states where men say, hey, I'm a woman, they get shipped to women's prison, everybody's pregnant. The guards, no. the women in the jail. <laughs> right. yes. So in yes. New York State, I know it don't fly. If mm -hmm. you have a penis, you go to man's jail. That I know. But in other states, it has flown and everybody's pregnant in the motherfucker. So whether that child support thing worked or not, um, in theory, it does work. But again, I did see it. I can't tell you if it's real. Yeah. I can't tell you if it worked. But I thought it was genius. Yeah, I mean, low key. But low key I wouldn't do but, it. But listen, but it's genius, but there's kids starving. Yeah, no, he's an <laughs> asshole. I'm not saying that. I was saying to think that. Like, yo, you yeah. know what? This well, is your system. Committed. Let me fuck your system up then. That's yeah, that's the system. Committed. Here you go, bro. I'm a woman. I, I, I respect it on that end. Like, I go so grab I'm a titty. I go grab a titty. I'll be like, yo, I'm a bra. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I can't. <laughs> I can't you identify can, as a bra. You cannot. So what were your, um, <laughs> what was your experience with the child support system? Right, so first of all. Because yeah, you got mad kids, bro. Yeah, but the thing, <laughs> I, I just want to explain to people that child support is associated with poverty, right? So I was married. My ex-wife was a doctor. I'm an entrepreneur. Wow. You don't put niggas like me on child support. Even though I'm hood and all that bullshit and I talk how I talk, she was not. You don't do that, right? So boom, you get in the system. Here's the deal. Child support, first and foremost, is 100% unconstitutional. It's illegal. It is voluntary. But you really got to know the law, number one. Number two, there's a lot of shit online, you know? Child support is fraud. My man in LA, I love that dude, right? He is a very knowledgeable man. He did it 22 years. You go in court and you just look at a judge like, child support is illegal. I ain't getting locked that. up. Contempt. You're going for 30. You're going to sit down. There's nothing you can do unless you got a lot of bread. You got a lot of bread. You come out. You can sue everybody, whatever. But most people don't. So it's not even a conversation. So what happened with me with child support is simply that I could not believe it was happening. Right? I could not believe. Like, So I'm getting divorced. We're in Nevada. It's a 50-50 state, right? And everything gets divided down the middle. But because I'm a real one and I had four girls at the time, I'm like, she could keep the crib and her, um, for lack of a better term, what it actually was, 401k, right? Because I'm old school. I'm a man of men. There was a lot of money in her 401k, but I'm like, that's her. She went to school for it. It's crazy, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Even though... When we got married, she didn't have her degrees. I put her through school, technically speaking. You know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. She still got a zillion yeah. dollars in loans, but I held down the kids, supported the family, whoopee, right? So I said, yo, everything's yours. It's cool, right? Custody of the kids. 50-50, I had my visitation, no problem, right? Then child support comes later, which I'll get into. So the first thing is, when I got divorced, I leave Nevada. I go to New York to get my head together, right? So my visitation, I still got a lot of bread at this point. I'm coming back and forth, New York, Nevada, New York, Nevada. I would knock at the door. She would call the police, right? Now, police would come. We lived in a nice neighborhood, whatever. I'm tatted up, so it looks odd. What are you doing here? I'm smart. I had my custody agreement on my iPhone. I would show the cops. I'm like, look. <laughs> and then they're like, all right, cool. I say, yo, she not letting the kids out. They're like... That's a domestic issue. You got to go to family court. Wow. Wow. Right? So a court order, a court order is actually a personal law. Right? So you can't kill. You kill somebody, you go to jail. A judge gives you a court order. You're not allowed to go in that bar. They take a picture of you in that bar, you go to jail. So the custody was court ordered. So by denying me my children, she violated. The judge would not reprimand her. Would not reprimand her. Why so? Because the family court system is lenient on the women. On the, mom. the family court system allows women to weaponize the court system against men. I'll prove that to you easily. No, no, no. You're a woman, can't support my kids, go to welfare, you're going to get child support. You're a man, can't support my kids, you're going to jail. It's the only civil uh, crime, and it's not even a crime, but it's the only civil thing you go to jail for, child support, right? So, okay, so I'm going back and forth with the custody and the bullshit. I'm trying to, like, get my whole mind around this. Why is she tripping? So I fuck around and move back to Nevada because I'm like, I can't be without my kids, right? Because you got to remember, 
I wasn't a nine to five dad. I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm freedom all the time. I'm the one who took them to school, picked them up. I braided hair in the morning. I cooked. All I was used to being with my kids, right? So now I don't have them. So now I'm losing my identity, right? During the divorce, I sold all my businesses because we're a 50-50 state, right? So the judge wanted to give her half. So I'm like, if I want to get rid of this woman out of my life, how the fuck am I going to bring her in as a business partner now? Feel me? Makes no sense. So I liquidate it, right? So I got no businesses and I'm not being a father. I have no fucking idea who I am, right? And and just generally speaking, not on no I bendito shit, but there's no sympathy for the man in divorce. No. Right. The man, oh, he left her. It's always the Hollywood shit. Like he got a younger broad, he ran off with the secretary, he doing it. Oh, motherfuckers is falling apart, fucked up in the game. So anybody who know me knows one motherfucking thing. I do not fuck with law enforcement. We not on that side, right? So after a few months, I start getting these letters in the mail with a big motherfucking badge on it. So I'm already flipping. Not to bore anybody, open it up. It's enforceable child support. There's two kinds of child support. There's you're on child support, pay, or if we make it easy on you, Mr. Johnny, we'll garnish it. Enforceable child support is you don't pay, we take an tally, we're going to bring you in the court, we're going to put you in jail. That's what enforceable is. Damn. They're taking the towel. A lot of people won't believe this. So basically, you talking to what sounds like the police. They tough, right? And this, this is on everything. I'll never forget, the second year on child support, I got a phone call about a week before Christmas from a private number. Never pick up private. We don't even pick up numbers. If your name ain't on it, we don't <laughs> yeah. pick up. Whatever compelled me to pick it up, because they called three, four times, it was definitely an African-American woman, police, and she was like, yeah, why don't you try putting something a little extra on that child support? It's Christmas time. Wow. And hung up. The weirdest thing, I cannot explain it. When I tell you that shit sent me through the roof, so let me tell you the child support story, how this went. So I know my bills at the crib, right? The bills are about 10000 a month at the time, right? So initially, I'm just, and anybody who really knows banking and shit, research this. Initially, I'm putting about $9,9500 in her account every month, directly in her checking account. I walk into Chase and do it, right? Then after a year or so, I'm like, yeah, fuck all that. We're going to have, I'm putting $4,500 in there. I'm putting it in. Chase comes up with a new guideline that says, if your name is not on that checking account, you cannot deposit cash. Yes. So I call her up and I'm like, yo, I can't deposit care. How you want to do it? Fuck you. You're going to jail. Whoop de whoop de whoop. Going to jail? Motherfucker, I'm giving you like 5000 a month. It was 10000 Fuck you talking about jail. I keep thinking shit's a game, right? I really think it's a fucking game. So let's just say for this conversation that the child support is $100 a month. Man. Got four kids. You know it's not. But let's just say to make it easy. So every month I'm giving in this month, ignoring the law because I have no respect. And that little hundred dollars is piling, it's piling, it's piling, it's piling. So I go see a lawyer in Nevada. This is a homie of mine. And he said, look, man, Nevada, there's no debtor's prison. Keep doing what you're doing. They're not going to put you in jail in Nevada. There's no debtor's prison. It is what it is. One day you could cash it out, whatever. You're giving her way more money. It's not a big deal. All right. So now I leave Nevada again after a couple years. I'm back in New York trying to get things cracking because I still don't have no real business yet. I'm still living off this bread and it's starting to burn through. She decides, and to this day, we don't know why, even though as I sit here today, it's a beautiful thing. She decides to move back to New York, right? She moves back to New York. Boom, I get subpoenaed. Boom, I go to court. This particular hearing, she's not there. Again, I'm playing fucking games. I'm starting to go broke and I don't want to hire an attorney yet. So the judge says to me, hey, you got to open order child support order in Nevada. I said, yeah. She goes, we want to bring it to New York. Are you cool with that? I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Little did I fucking know. So now I got an open order in New York that I've been paying, and now I got this Nevada coming to New York. So now I'm going to have two orders. One of them has a $23,000 deficit. This one is paid. So they're not counting, though, where you've been... Zero. Guess what? 
And again, I told you I came here to keep it real. During this time, I still got one foot on the block. So I had wired somebody some money to Northern California. Mm. And Chase sent me a check with all my money and shut my accounts down. So when I tried to get the documents that I've been putting money, they said no. Mm. And they had me on the list for suspicious activity. Bro, they could do Illicit. anything. Right. They control you. So I'm, I'm still not even pressed because I got people who work at Chase. So I'm like, yo, do me a favor. They're like, my nigga, I love you. That's instant firing. Wow. <laughs> That's instant firing. We can't go in her account and sh we cannot do it because if she challenges it, they're going to see who went in. Yeah. It's too big a risk. Right. Now, at the time when you're <clears throat> desperate, you're not thinking about other people and their livelihood. You know, you're close to these people. It's like, man, help me out. I'm about to be fucked up. But it's wrong. Right. They got kids. They got their own life. It's bullshit. But when you're desperate, you do this dumb shit. So I had no wins, right? So now I got two orders in New York, right? So finally, about a year or two in, she brings me to court. And she's there, and I got a motherfucking lawyer, Jew lawyer. She there by herself in a little Chanel suit, looking dainty, right? <laughs> so I'm like, man, we're going to eat her a lot. Now, I'm dressed to go. I got to go to Vegas on business. I'm leaving from court to the airport, right? So the judge is like, um, <clears throat> you know, you got this money. With and I explained to the judge. I said, look, that's an order from over there. I've been paying whatever. She goes, you got the receipts? I'm like, no. She's like, um, ma'am, has he been paying? She's like, this motherfucker owe me hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's a yeah, fucking thief, a scammer, a drug dealer, a master money launderer, and he's nasty with LLCs, trust, and all that. Everything's in his mother's name. Fuck that motherfucker. Why was she so angry? Yes. Because I had the boy already. Keep it a stack. So Bunker. she still wanted to be with you? Yeah. Yeah, mm. Keep it a stack. I okay. had the boy already. You know so saying? it was you. And, you know, I'm again, in, in all <laughs> honesty, right? All, all I could go and make a whole bunch of jokes mm -hmm, right now. Yeah. But to keep it real, we planned to be together forever. So everything she knew was through She was me. hurt. Yeah, she was devastated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't take the toxic motherfucking abuse no more. You know what I'm saying? And I'll never take that from no woman to this day. Like, no woman's going to tell me I'm a piece of shit. I'm this, I'm that. I'm a tremendous success. And from what I come from, pff, fuck mm -hmm. that. You're not even going to cross your eyes at me. Because I'm from the street. I know who your prior motherfucking man was. I know who your family is. You ain't never going to put me in that category. Right. Cut me down, right? Yeah. So it, it was like toxic shit. It was mm -hmm. unfortunate. Yeah. You know, you just couldn't win. I was unhappy. She was unhappy. But we still planned. I blindsided her. And now that I blindsided her, but then I have a son right away. So I, I keep it a stack, yeah. right? She was hurt. So the judge is like, all right, so what do you want to do, bro? And I'm like, what do you want me to do? She's like, well, you better make her an offer because you're going to go to jail today. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, jail? I'm about to go to the airport. What the fuck is you talking about? She's like, yeah, no, you better make her an offer. So my lawyer has said, bring five grand with you, right? So I said, I know this motherfucker. I said, five grand, you're going to do it. I'll bring 15. He's like, whatever. 5,000. She says, nope. 10,000. Nope. I said, Your Honor, 15000 That's what I got on me. So she said, you want it? She said, I moved across the country to put this motherfucker in jail. Damn, if he got 50000 on him, I don't want it. I want him in jail. So the judge said, what you want to do? I said, fuck it then. Lock me up. Fuck out of here. Wow. And you worst kept your money. Mistake, worst mistake I ever made in my motherfucking life. That ego and that mouth. So let me tell y'all. So, boom. Right then and there? I, I don't even say. I look at my lawyer like, you're a piece of shit. Die slow, homie. Die slow. How she won and you, I got to look. Bro, when I tell you, I told you, lock me up. Before I could put my hand down, I was in cuffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took me in the back. Of course, the minute you in cuffs, your face itch, your hair itch, every motherfucking mm -hmm. thing itch. <laughs> motherfucking. So, long story short, what was fucked up, about is when I go to jail, the jail is overcrowded. So there's no towels, no underwears, no chancletas for the shower. What did they send you? Where did they send me? Yeah. It's upstate, thank God. Oh, okay. It's Orange County. And I thought it was right because I'm like, no, damn. No, right. I wouldn't be here. Be <laughs> right. So boom. So I'm upstate. So the first thing is that they put you in solitaire for two days because of tuberculosis, right? 
So they hit you with the wow. thing, right? Oh, yeah. And you in solitaire, 23 and three-fourths all day. You get 15 minutes for shower and phone call. So they say it only lasts two days, right? Now, because I'm in my area, the small perks, as the guards are switching, I know these motherfuckers. So like on the third day, I'm like, yo, son, I've been here three days. What's good? They're like, nah, nigga, you covered in tattoos, man. The gang unit got to study. It's like, yeah, gang unit, man. I'm old as hell. What the fuck you talking about? Ain't no gangs. Nah, they got to study your shit. I said, bro, at least give me a book, a newspaper, a fucking pen. Because when you're in that, you don't even get a pen and a pad. We get nothing. Yeah, bro. Just sitting there. You just, just with your there. thoughts. Yeah, sitting there. Oh. Right? Replaying the whole court shit. Wow. Yeah. All right, so boom. Fourth day, they let me out 10, 20 at night. So they walk me down to my cell, which is actually a dorm, right? So it's it's lights out at 10.30. It's 10.22 now. They knock on the door. I walk in, there's 100 motherfuckers like this watching TV. I Looking at me. Like, and I'm like, man, this is some fucking low life gutter shit, man. So boom, I walk in, I tell the CEO, I'm like, yo, son, I can't be on no top bunk, man. I just had surgery on my shoulder, which was true. And he was like, yeah, I don't really give a fuck. You're going to get up on the top bunk. So, and, and, and at the time, the law is anyone over 40 can't get a top bunk. And when I say bunk, these are metal beds. It's just a piece of metal. Right. It's not like a bed or anything right. of that nature. So one of the homies, my man Hove, uh, white boy Hove, he was like under my wing when he was a kid. He's in there. He's like, yo, what the fuck? And he was like, oh, man, that bitch, huh? I said, man, you know what it is. So long story short, he was in my unit, and he was able to get me what I needed. You know what I mean? Shorts, chancletas, towels, all that shit. Food, because commissary takes forever to get on the books. Then when they found out I was diabetic, they didn't give me the commissary anyway. Like, yeah, you get nothing, nigga. Damn. You feel me? They gave me a notebook and some T-shirts. No, with the money. For you. Nothing, I nothing. No, no, no. Be culture, nothing. <laughs> nothing. So anyway... So, uh, long story short, here's the fucked up thing about jail. And these are the things niggas don't think about. And as far as the staff and medical, they were very, very nice to me. The guards was pussy. They pussy, I'll tell you, I'll tell them to their face, they pussy in there, you cannot. It's just going to fuck your whole shit up. I have neuropathy, right? So there's a medication called gabapentin you take to quell the neuropathy, right? Unfortunately, gabapentin is an anti-seizure medication on the books, so when I got there, they were like, yo, you straight, we got up, but we can't give you the gabapentin. So I'm like, why? They're like, bro, it's seizure. You don't have seizures. You know what I'm saying? You got, so like, we're going to wean you off, but that's it. You can't have it. That was a nightmare. So I'll never, ever, 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 ever in this life forgive my ex-wife for that because it was bogus. She put me in jail on spite work. You know what I mean? Nasty work. And I suffered because I didn't have that fucking medication. That shit was real. That How long did they finish. give you? They gave me 30 days, man. It was bullshit, but it feels like a fucking eternity when, you know what I mean? When you were a balling ass motherfucker. Like, my life is my life. I've never punched a clock in my life, nine to five, nothing. I was on my way to Vegas. All of a sudden, you in a cell. This motherfucker got AIDS. This motherfucker got hepatitis C. Yeah. Feel me? How your daughters received all that, though? Oh, man. They hated their mother. They was crying like a motherfucker. Oh, they took your side. Oh, they definitely took. See, by this time, the tables are turning. Because they're um, right? older. They're starting to mm -hmm. see, right? So once that, yeah, once that happened, bro, they, they were devastated that she would do it. And they told me, they told me, they said, bro, every night she would call her friends and be laughing and clowning you and all that. Wow. But again, yeah. that's gutter shit. I don't even have to repeat that. No, and I don't Ooh. take that serious, right? They told me, I know it's real, but we move past that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? God is the greatest. Amen. God is the greatest Amen. because uh, a lot of things turned around. Your wife, I mean, ex-wife, obviously, successful doctor. What route did your kids take? And are any of them exhibiting that entrepreneurial spirit? Yeah, all right. Or do they look at you like, yo, dad is just a jack of all trades. I don't want to do that with his crazy ass tattoo. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. So, all right. So my eldest, she did not stick to the script. This little motherfucker. <laughs> this motherfucker... Fell in love with a nigga like online. She got a job at McDonald's at 14. Uh, got a plane ticket and blew. <laughs> that was not part of our plan. We were no. a uh -huh. square ass, domesticated family, suburb life. Where you going? You grew up in 5,000 square feet of marble. Where the fuck you going to live in the projects? Like, what the fuck you doing? Once again, the law protected her, her little boyfriend, and 
the adults that were protecting her. Oh, she's a child. Mm. Because there's <coughs> something called teenage discretion. Well, I never heard yeah, of it. Exactly. No one has until you're up against it. <laughs> until you're fucking up against it, right? So she leaves the crib. We don't got to get too much into that, yeah. but she's still with the dude to this day who I okay, hate. Okay, well, at least it so, worked. Uh, <laughs> he said, uh, who I hate? Uh, no, 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 he's a <laughs> piece of to, shit. She's trying to see the work. silver lining. She, she has two kids. My wife, my my daughter is the breadwinner. You know, nigga's a whole bum. I'm not afraid to say mm -hmm. it. Two kids, whatever. My daughter's great. She's smart. She's doing her thing. Bella. Bella sticks to the script because we said, look, I'm the entrepreneur, I'm the risk taker. Your mother did it the school route, however you want to go. Mm -hmm. Bella said, I'm going to go the school route. So Bella decides she wants to do fashion. I was against it. She goes, no, you don't understand. Why were you against it? Because all my homies went to FIT and then wind up going to another four-year school because they couldn't <laughs> do nothing with it. So I was in that square, right? She's like, no, I'm going for fashion business, bro. Now, straight up and down, I tell my daughter, you're incredibly beautiful at this age. A lot of this shit has to do with your beauty. So be easy, be humble, and continue learning because it ain't always going to be like that. This kid, I can say now, she was working for Serena Williams before she even got out of college. Wow. And like, I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one direct. Like Serena would FaceTime her. Serena sent her an autographed tennis ball for her birthday with a little note that said, don't sell this on eBay. You know I'm <laughs> and I'm like, got tears in my eyes. And she's like, daddy, you know, like, it's Zales jewelry, man. We just re we just rebranded. It's not that big a deal. And I'm like, my baby's working for Serena. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she just stepped in shit. So she gets out of school. And, and as a matter of fact, it was uh, J. Crew that said to her, um, you know, we know we, you're working for Serena and all that. We know you graduate this weekend. Have a great weekend. Just know Monday morning, we're going to make you offer, and you're going to be over here. We need you on this side. Fire. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. And she got an office in Manhattan and all that. It's crazy. It's crazy. So now, Sophia, my third, who's a lot like me, um, she took the entrepreneurial route. She does hair and all that, and she wants to open her own salon. So my thing nice. with her, Beautiful. but she do hair in a major way. She's another one I had to have a talk to. Because the fact that, like, you know, we come from the barber era, you know, $10 a cut. Yeah. And she gets, like, $1,800 to put yep. weave in. Jesus Christ. You yep. feel me? And still living at home. I'm like, listen, this ain't forever. So my promise to her is you finish school, get a business degree, and I'll help you open the salon, yeah. you know, financially. Right. And then, you know, my baby, you know, she's still in school. But she's AP. She wants to be a doctor, a medical doctor. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully that pans out. So, And then... Oh, the boy? Yeah, I don't know what the boy going to be, son. I mean, he's 10. I yo, he's cute. Mm -hmm. No yeah. weird shit. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you, but I'm saying I don't I see know. that kid. I'm like, yo, he's going to do whatever he wants. I hope so. I don't I don't know what plans he's going to take business-wise, but we do have discussions. There's no question, right? So, and that goes back to parenting. That goes back to the top of this conversation, is that as a father who went out into the real world, raw dog with no safety net, you know the things you need to say to your children that weren't said to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, like, at least for me, you know, I come from working class people. The majority of conversation, life, everything was around bills. Mm. Straight up and down. Yeah, that was the majority yeah. of everything. Nobody's worrying about what the fuck I'm going to do when I'm older when the goddamn mortgages do. Exactly. And shit is jammed up. And they have, you know, I don't know, man. It's just a different era, man. But it, when I saw, well, this is what I saw. I was born bougie, meaning I saw my parents both work, yet there was always arguments about money. So I'm like, y'all got it fucked up. Y'all both work continuously. Why do you not have money if you work? Okay, work is not it. That's how I interpreted it. You know what I'm saying? So in terms of my son, the conversations we have is simply that, like, you know, when you work for someone, and there's nothing wrong with working for someone you're young to gain experience, but you're limited. Your experience on this planet will be limited. You will not be able to come and go as you please. You won't be able to travel as you please. So if you want to be anything like your father, you know, you still got to start thinking of these things young. Yep. You know, how am I going to earn money? What service can I provide? What business am I interested in? So, you know, those are the kind of things. But again, he's 10. So I have about Three minutes of his, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have about true. three minutes of his motherfucking attention span. Do you push them to create their own branding? Like, 
if you see something in them, like especially your boy, like I said, I see him doing the sturdy and doing yeah. all stuff. Like nothing comes up in convo. Like yo, listen, start doing your own thing because that's what you're doing, right? You did it out of necessity. Obviously, that's the new marketing way. That's just the new business tactics of these days. What do you do? Do I? No, nah, I'm gonna be real. No, I don't. I don't. Nothing about Brandon because I need to see something. I need to see something be born in him, so I could be like. So you don't push your own narrative on him. Right. He mm -hmm. wanted something. You know what I'm saying? So if I see that birth happen, then I'll start, you know, heading in that direction. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, before we sign out, we have a special segment where it's the guest gets to ask the cast a question. What is on your mind, sir? About y'all niggas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to go into the um the threesome with the teacher? Y'all freaky deekies? Was like, oh, no. That was just Cap. I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was opening up a whole episode. Like, like, hey, with that. Hold on, that's for the Patreon. Yeah. Whoop. There is no cap. Um, <laughs> I hate you. I, listen. Wow. He's so wow. stupid, I yeah. swear. I'm going to keep it real. I feel like, first of all, I feel like I over-talked. Keep it a stack. No. And I feel like- No, you did, you did. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like we didn't um, talk we, about parents. We still got time. Talk about- uh, I feel like we didn't talk about parenting. No, we did, though. You know what it is, man? It's the story was fucking wild, bro. So, no, but also... I, hold on. I'm gonna switch the yeah, drink some water. Oh. Yeah, it was one shot. <laughs> oh. Hey, Aki's over here. Anyway. It, look who's talking. I'm drinking water. No, it's just not your average parenting talk. And that's the difference. I don't yeah. want the average parenting yes. talk. So, you know, yeah. nah, what's the macaroni why... and cheese that you feed your children? Right, I don't right. give a shit. Right, right. No, we want to know the real shit. And that's, you know, that's what you're talking. And that's what you came with, man. I mean, obviously, we're going to do a little Patreon episode and shit. We'll get a little deep into some other stuff. But I really do appreciate you coming here. It's my pleasure, man. You keeping it a buck. This is the second week in a row we got a Puerto Rican entrepreneur. Yo. And you know what? You know what's crazy? Y'all making moves, bro. I, I noticed them saying the same things. Yeah. I noticed, I noticed like little things saying the same things. And I'm like, woo. Okay. Because that's got to be around that shit more, man. Yeah, yeah, no, of Especially course. us. Oh, yeah, no, we we are who we surround ourselves with, and we're surrounding, yes. surrounding ourselves with some successful Latinos, and I just love it. Yeah. And we got some legalification uh, questions after the show. <laughs> are we really going to do like another episode? Like a Patreon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just all the extra shit. Uh, that's all the yeah, extra. Because if y'all are interested, let's talk about business. Let's talk. Yeah, about we're gonna it. do it for Patreon, yeah, but I also want to talk about get into that because we want to talk about your dog Diddy, but I want to talk about Diddy Diddy. <laughs> yeah, we, we, oh, Diddy, yeah, yeah, we yeah, do yeah. want to talk about Diddy Diddy. So, for those of you watching, tune into the Patreon. It's only three dollars a month, ten cents a day for all this behind the scenes action. Fox, thanks you for being. Thank you for being here. Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it, y'all. Thank you so much. <laughs>